What's up guys? All right, I'm back for another video and uh, got this hat on now because it is cold outside. Uh, first of all, happy new year to everyone. We're in Kansas City. We finally got our winter. I think it is about 10 degrees outside right now. And I wanted to grab the video camera because haven't really talked much about our dogs, our Great Pyrenees, uh, but I figured today would be a good day to do it because we had another incident with them. Uh, just recently, they, uh, so we have, we have them contained, we're on about a nine-ish acre property, and we have, have them contained on uh, an electric collar. They've been trained on it. They're three years old, and they pretty much have stayed put their entire time with us, except for recently they've started venturing out again at night or they've started getting out at night. So I'm gonna try to find out if there's a gap somewhere. I don't think there is. I actually think what's happening is um, they're hearing the coyotes and they're going after the coyotes and their drive is so strong that it's just, they're taking the shock. Uh, just to go after the coyotes. And the reason I say this is because um, a couple days ago we, we got noticed that they were found, uh, they are microchipped, and so we were notified by the vet. We went to go pick them up. And Bernard, our male, their brother and sister, <clears throat> he had blood all kind of around his collar area and it's not his blood blood as uh as in blood from another animal that he probably attacked and not far from where he was found from what we were told there was a coyote carcass now i don't know what the likelihood is of these guys actually going after a coyote uh physically i know that they will bark and intimidate but i don't know if they'll actually physically go after them. I mean, it's, it's very likely, especially when there's two of them. Um, here's Bernard. I'm going to try to find a place that's a little bit sheltered because once again, it is pretty cold outside. But anyways, he had blood all over his collar and that leads me to believe he was going after a coyote or another animal. And that's why he just took off, took the shock and, uh, and they were gone pretty much all night. So we had to go rescue him. We brought him back. Well, we're now two, three days later, and I woke up this morning, they were gone again. And they came back on their own accord. The thing is, previously they wouldn't come back past the boundaries because they knew what they, they would get the shock. But they came back on their own accord this time. So that tells me they're coming in somewhere where there's a gap. So I gotta go around and find out where there's maybe a gap in the, the fence line where that collar's not going off on them. Uh, but I do know the collar works on them because I've trained them on it. And I know if I put them on a leash and try to take them out past the boundary, they won't go. So I know uh, the shot gets them. And previously they were trained on it to where I just used the beep on the collar. But the dogs, they, they, they're smart enough to know that, okay, well, they hear the beep, they don't feel that shock, and eventually uh, they discover that, you know, it's only a beep, they're not getting shocked, so then I have to turn the, the shock back on. And that's essentially how we train them, and that's how I guess you're supposed to train them. But anyhow, I have the shock back on them. They're getting the shock, and they're still just taking the shock because I think their instinct and their drive to go after the uh, predators is so strong that it just kind of, uh, they just don't care. Uh, but anyways, I wanted to take the opportunity to just talk about the dogs because I have not talked about our dogs really in any other prior video. And of course, lucky me, I took a, a day that's uh, 10 degrees outside to, to do this. But <clears throat> um, in short, uh, we've got uh, Betty and Bernard. This is uh, Bernard here. He's our male. And um, we've had them, so he's, they're, they're from the same litter. And um, we got them from a farmer who, uh, he, he, he raised, uh, he, these guys were raised up um, around cows, chickens, goats, you name it. We don't have any real livestock yet other than chickens. Um, but uh, they, for the most part, do show their uh, guardian uh, instincts. Bernard, I'd say more so than Betty, his sister. Uh, however, they do if they hear coyotes, they'll bark, and they'll they'll they're, they're pretty um, 
active at night. They are known to be nocturnal, so they are definitely more active during the nighttime than they are during the day. However, with them being cold outside, uh, these dogs actually, for us anyways, they are pretty active during the day when it gets cold. Um, in one of my previous videos, I was talking about how <clears throat> um, I would hear friends and family express concerns about us keeping our dogs out in this kind of weather. And once again, we've had them for so three years and they have their shelter and I'm gonna show that to you here in a bit. Um, but these dogs just, they don't get cold, okay? And, and, and it's my belief that, you know, there are certain dogs that are meant to be outside. Certain dogs are just more suitable to be indoors. Uh, these dogs, of course, they would be, com would they be comfortable indoors, I'm sure, but that's not where they belong, in my opinion. Uh, they need a lot of room to run. Uh, like I said, we have about nine acres or so. And uh, they also have a nice thick coat. Um, and so, it, it, and it definitely thickens up in the colder months. And when it's freezing cold outside, when it's zero degrees outside, instead of sitting in their shelter, they're gonna be sitting out here uh, during the day, at night. Um, I think part of it is just, it's just their instinct to just stay, stay uh, awake and stay mindful of kind of their environment. The only time they really go in their shelter is if it's raining um, or if it's like a really hard snow and they don't want to get wet because they, they really don't like getting wet. But that's about the only time they'll go in their shelter. Uh, so aside from that, um, once again, it is, uh, yeah, it was about 10 degrees here uh, when I checked. It might be a little bit warmer now. Um, we're early afternoon, but uh, it's pretty cold outside. I was out earlier walking around and my, my eyelashes were icing up. So it, it was cold. It is cold and they're doing just fine. Um, but anyways, <clears throat> yeah, so um, eventually we were hoping to get some livestock. I just haven't had the time to do it. All we have is chickens. Bernard's putting on a little show for you here. Um, but we have an electric uh, collar on them. So they stay for the most part in the yard. I now have a dilemma of trying to figure out where they might be getting out and the concern of keeping them uh, contained because there are um, there's you know of course a high a highway that's not too far from us and unfortunately that's where they were found uh, a couple days ago close to that highway so that's a, that's a, a big concern of mine so keeping them contained is is a big issue and I don't know if, if, if you guys have any suggestions on um, or ideas on what we can do to to try to keep them contained let me know I've been doing a lot of research I know People have said anything from you know tall fence to hot wire fence. Well, we part of the the, the uh, property it does have a hot cattle fence. They're not. I can tell you they're not getting around all the, that area. They're they're going out around probably the front of the house, the perimeter of the house where there's no fencing. And quite frankly, uh, putting up a six foot fence just isn't going to happen. Um, unfortunately, I don't know if maybe getting livestock would keep them here. Uh, if maybe getting livestock would. Uh, keep them occupied enough, uh, give them a job to do that they would stay. I've read mixed about that. I've, I've read on forums where people said they have livestock and the dogs are still getting out. So um, it could just very well be in their nature that they roam and they cover large land and we've only got nine-ish acres. So um, hasn't really been much of a problem in the, in the three years that we've had them. But um, of course, when it does happen, it's a concern for us. So. Uh, any tips, suggestions, let me know in the comments below. would certainly appreciate it. Uh, but now i got to go and figure out where the gap is. And, of course, with him getting out, he's got all these burrs on him uh, that i got to comb through his, his, his uh, fur now, his coat. But these are good dogs. Um, you know, they, um, they bark a lot uh, for us, and we knew that. We did quite a bit of research before we got them. Um, at night especially, uh, if they hear coyotes or really any any um, unusual sounds, they're, they're barking. And so uh, it doesn't bother us. I know some of the guests that stay at our house might be bothered by it, but it doesn't really bother us too much. Um, in fact, I, I kind of like it because it lets me know that they're doing their job. And um, I know that, that other the day after we rescued them here a couple days ago, they were barking pretty uh, wildly at the on the northwest corner of our property and I went out there with the light it was about 11 12 o'clock um, in the morning <clears throat> um, early morning and um, I shot a flashlight out there and there was two I think maybe three coyotes that were 
sitting there on the perimeter of the our property. Now the funny thing is, um, the coyotes have actually learned, before we got these dogs, the coyotes actually came up right next to our house. Um, our chickens, we wouldn't have chickens uh, free ranging if, if these dogs weren't here. Uh, but since we've had the dogs, we haven't had any issues with any sort of animals, wild animals, coming onto our property. Um, we've, they've taken down a raccoon once, um, but ever since then, we've never had any, any other animals come close to our house. But the funny thing is the coyotes seem to know uh, the perimeter where these dogs will not pass, the, the fence. And so the other night, I saw two, three coyotes just beyond uh, the perimeter where these dogs were barking. And so they weren't crossing the perimeter, they were staying on the property. Um, but I believe where they got out, because I saw some tracks there uh, when I was walking around this morning, is that same area where I think the coyotes were essentially taunting the dogs. I've seen it before. They're, they're walking the perimeter of the property because they know Betty and Bernard will not go past. And they're essentially just strolling there, kind of teasing these guys. And, um, you know, I don't know, if, I, I'm guessing once again, that's why they got out um, at night is just their drive to go after them is so strong that they'll take that temporary shock. And obviously they know they'll get shocked for just a few seconds. They pass that boundary and, uh, and they're off. And so they're shock free. Um, if you're wondering, um, we do have the extreme dog fence. Um, it's worked once again, really well for us for the most part. Um, Betty's got the normal six volt shock collar and she's for the most part pretty timid. So she's never really been fond of, of getting that shock. Um, Bernard has in a few instances taken that shock. So he, he's got an upgraded collar. We have the 7.5 volt on him. Uh, and even at the strongest setting, uh, I hate to say it, but he'll still take that shock um, like a champ, really. So um, we don't really like to shock these guys if we don't need to, but unfortunately we do want to try to keep them contained and that's kind of our best um, solution for now. So um, yeah, uh, I've <clears throat> been really happy with these uh, dogs for the most part. When we first got them around our chickens when they were puppies, we did have to train them, sort of, with the chickens. Um, because when they're young, they really don't mature. For about the first two, two and a half years, they really don't mature yet. So they're still really big puppies. And we did lose a few chickens to the dogs. Um, but that was kind of expected. And uh, for the most part now, they just leave the chickens alone. Now the chickens are inside because it's cold and snowy and the chickens don't like the snow. So. Yeah, it took a while to get them uh, used to being around the chickens, but now I wouldn't say they really guard the chickens, but they definitely keep the predators away. So that's not an issue um, with the chickens now, except for they don't really keep, can't really say they keep the hawks away because now the chickens sometimes just don't come out much because of the hawks. Um, but we haven't had any issues with raccoons, skunks, possums. Coyotes coming up close to the house. I'm gonna show you their shelter. So their shelter is um, a horse stall. It's an older horse stall. So quite frankly, it's a it's kind of a mansion for the dogs because it's more space than they need, but we don't have any horses. But it is nice and cozy in here. So they come in, we've got their feeder, um, 250 pound um, self feeders for them. And so they'll just come in here and eat as they eat as they please. And they'll come in here, like I said, when it's uh, when it's raining, when it's when it's really windy, they'll come in here. When it's snowing really heavily, they'll come in here. But uh, if I come in here, it's 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 pretty cozy. Uh, honestly, it is. Um, despite how cold it is, I mean, with the s straw bales and stuff. Um, it's a comfortable place for them. So they have their shelter. Occasionally we'll open up the barn door over here for them and they'll come inside the barn as well. Um, oops. Although I will tell you, they actually prefer once again, still being outside. Um, even if it's cold out. So, well, I'm going to go off and uh, try to find this 
maybe gap in the fence that we might have. Um, I don't know what else I can tell you about these dogs. The kids, uh, they're really great with the kids, um, especially Bernard. He, uh, we notice when the kids come out, um, well, what I'll notice, so you'll even see it now, as I'm walking around, Bernard, he, he likes to follow, kind of keeps close. Betty, on the other hand, not so much. She's just kind of in her own little world. Um, but Bernard, he likes to stay close when we're outside. Um, it's awesome to note when the kids are out and we're not, he'll hang around the kids. Um, I've even seen where he kind of gets in between, like if, if the kids are playing towards the front yard, um, maybe it's just coincidence, I don't know, but he always kind of walks, you know, and cars are going by, he'll walk on the side uh, between the kids and the cars. And uh, once again, I don't know if that's coincidence or if he actually knows, but 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 he just he's he's got uh you definitely can tell he's got that instinct of protecting and once again we don't have any livestock but if we were the livestock i suppose that's kind of what he's doing is just um protecting uh what he's supposed to protect meant to protect so um they're good with uh at least ours are good with um the drivers that come up you know especially the amazon drivers that come up and deliver for us and the ups guys um Bernard's much friendlier. He'll approach him. Betty's a little bit more standoffish, but uh, I don't really have much concern about them being aggressive towards anybody. Um, I'm sure they could be. I'm sure any dog could be. Uh, I am curious what he would do if someone were to, say, try to attack me. I've heard of stories about uh, people's guardian dogs protecting their owners in that way, where somebody physically tries to attack the owner and the any dog, I guess, maybe would try to defend its owner. I, I am curious about how he would stand up to a situation like that but I, I don't know if i'll ever see that play out but um but yeah once again you notice like a anywhere i go if i'm outside this guy's with me bernard's with me so uh i'll, I'll have to admit he's between the two uh, betty and bernard bernard's definitely my favorite i think my wife knows that my kids know that um he is uh not neutered yet i plan to get him neutered i know i was told i know there's mixed um thoughts on this but i was told by the farmer that we got him from um not to neuter him or spay her until they were older uh because of concerns about them stunting their growth i don't know if there's any truth to that the vet said there's not any truth to that but i will tell you i ended up spaying betty just because they're brother and sister i ended up spaying betty when she's about four months or so um because I didn't want any brother and sister puppies. And so uh, because I spayed her early, I don't know if it's because she's a female or what, but her size is definitely not the size of a livestock dog. She's much smaller, um, her stature is, and her guardian instincts don't seem as great as Bernard. Once again, I could just be feeding that into my own head, um, but Bernard's not neutered and he He's much bigger in size. He's a pretty hefty boy. Um, I think he's about 120, maybe 120, 130 is, is what I want to say. Um, we were told his dad, his his dad was about 150, 140, 150 is what we were told. Um, but he's about 120-ish, would be my guess. Um, but yeah, so I do plan to neuter him. I have these secret talks with him uh, where I tell him that if he keeps running away, um, I'm going to have to neuter him. The last time I did that, uh, it seemed to work. He, he stopped running away, so I had to talk with him again this morning and told him that if he keeps running away, I'm going to have to take him to the vet and uh, he's, he might lose his, lose his manhood. But uh, no, we're going to we're going to do that anyways. That was the plan. It's just uh, admittedly, I feel a little bad about doing it. I, I had a boxer uh, years ago um, when I was much younger. Uh, I had a boxer and when uh, I took him to the vet, to get neutered and then um i picked him up uh i could tell he was mad at me i don't care what, what any of you say these dogs know uh they, they know what you're doing to them and um I, I felt like he was mad at me for for doing that I, I would be mad at me for doing that but of course in this day and age that's kind of the uh the right thing to do is is to fix your dog so 
I'm gonna get them fixed eventually. Um, that's the plan, that's been the plan. But for now, um, I'll use it as leverage. So maybe I'll just say if he never roams, he never runs, and I'll just tell him I won't neuter him, but he won't roam, right? So uh, yeah, now I'm gonna go walk the property and see if I can find this potential gap. Hopefully they stop roaming. I had this little trick. Well, I shouldn't call it a trick, but we've been trying to get them um, trained to the sound of this bell. Uh, so every morning uh, we'll ring this bell and they'll come up to the house and we'll give them some good treats. Well, the treats lately have been fresh chicken gizzards, um, which by the way, uh, are much um, more desirable by these guys than uh, the store-bought treats. So I'll get them fresh chicken gizzards. And so every morning I ring that bell, they come, and my hope is that they just get so accustomed to just uh, being around, waiting for that bell, that they won't run off. And like I said, it's worked for a while, and then we stopped doing it. And uh, of course, that's when we have the issue of them getting out. So it's only been twice now within the last week, two weeks that they've uh, gotten out, but uh, it's, more, it's one too many times that uh, I wouldn't have to deal with, because like I said, it's just, as a dog owner, you, you worry, right? You worry about the safety uh, of your dogs. You worry about the safety of others that might encounter them. I'd say most people are probably dog lovers or okay with dogs, but you gotta be respectful of people that uh, just quite frankly don't like dogs or big dogs. So just for them to be, just the thought of them being out and maybe at somebody else's yard or showing up in somebody's you know doorstep. Um, yeah, I don't like that. I wanna be respectful of others. And we don't have any immediate direct neighbors. We're surrounded by open farmland, but uh, as most places you go now, the developments are coming in. So the neighborhoods are not too far off from us. And these guys are known to cover acres and acres of, of land. So, um, so yeah, just trying to be mindful of that. But um, yeah, I don't know what else I can share with you. Um, just like with the chickens, we do automate the process with um, taking care of them. They, I, I showed you their feeder in their little uh, in their house over there. So we could be gone uh, with, they have a feeder, they have water, uh, or a water tub, and then they have access to the pond if you wanna go drink the pond water. Um, but we could be gone uh, on vacation, just like with the chickens, we could be gone for a really long time if we wanted to, and the dogs would be just fine. Um, the longest time we've been gone from them is, is about a week, um, maybe like eight days. That was actually this past summer. We went to uh, Outer Banks and um, came home and they were still here. So they got plenty of food, um, you know, 250 pound, uh, so basically 100 pounds of food sitting out for them, plus water and they're perfectly fine. So they were here when we got back. You know, honestly, with this, uh, with this, in the summer months, um, they're just not as active um, because of the heat. But now that it's colder, that also quite might, quite be, uh, might, might be the other contributing factor as to why they're now deciding to get out. It's just, uh, you know, here we are standing in below freezing temperatures and I'm kind of bundled up and Dog's got no issue, so. Oh boy, well, now it's off. Now I'm off to the task of trying to find out where they're getting out. So as you can see, I kind of crossed this hot, hot fence here. Bernard goes through that fence. He, on the surface it appears he could just come under there. It's not the hot fence that's keeping him from coming through that. The dog fence, I actually have this back end of our property sectioned off from the front part of our property with the dog fence. And so that way they know they can only pass through this, uh, this gate over here. And so, uh, and I do that. So sometimes if I want to keep them from going in the back, then I can just close that gate off. The entire nine-ish acres that we have is fenced off with the dog fence. Um, I just got to find out where there's a potential gap. So here's Betty for you. I mean, if it were below freezing outside, would would you just sit out in the uh, the open? Well, I guess I mean it, may, it might feel nice in the sun, but. Um,
Betty just doesn't, she doesn't care that we're out here. She doesn't care I'm out here. Bernard, on the other hand, he's always with me. He's a good dog. All right, let's go see if I can find this gap. Be sure to comment below once again if you have any tips, suggestions on keeping these guys occupied other than getting livestock um, or any other brand fence, electric collar fence that you guys recommend. Um, I'd appreciate it. So thanks for watching. Appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. I told my wife and kids. A good New Year's resolution for me would be to be a little bit more focused on making uh, more of these videos and keeping up with this channel. So I always talk about it, always have these ideas about shooting these videos, this video, that video. Yeah, I just never, I, I always just, it always slips my mind, I never grab the camera, I never do it. So maybe 2022 will be the year that I grab this camera and just take it everywhere with me. So I need to get in the habit of that. But thanks again for watching. Uh, please subscribe, comment below. Let me know what you think, any ideas you have for me shooting videos, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Hey, same day, I'm back. So I was just in the middle of working out. My wife came and grabbed me, said that uh, she heard the dogs barking. She looked outside and coyotes were back. So I wanted to grab the camera. Oh, it's dark out, you can't see me. I wanted to grab the camera and see if I could catch the dogs possibly in action but I looked outside and they were here they were running around the perimeter barking so the coyotes definitely were back uh, Betty's or Bernard's here with me Let's see if we can get the light on it's only about 5 30 but the sun is uh, setting pretty early I see Betty back there she's sitting she's sitting by the perimeter which usually indicates they did see <clears throat> something along the border the one time I caught Bernard crossing the boundary uh, in the act he did sit at the bound of the perimeter just like that and uh, and I saw the coyotes kind of in the distance and he just couldn't take it anymore and just like that he just jetted off took the shock on the collar and oh, sorry camera cut out on me there uh, both the dogs are still here. Um, so earlier today, after I recorded my my session about the dogs, I did kind of run them through a quick retraining. So you can see Bernard here standing guard. He sees something, heard something. That's usually his stance right there. Um, the perimeter is like right here, where that post is at. Um, this is our compost pile. But uh, let me shine out here, see if we can catch any reflections. <clears throat> so I don't see anything. Of course that doesn't mean anything because the coyotes move fast. So we live, so right across from us to the west of our house, are some railroad tracks and there's some developments that are coming in and it's it's previously been very wooded and grassy and I know coyotes have been living there since those developments have come in um, the coyotes basically get chased across the tracks past our property and and east of our property and they kind of make that trek daily kind of seems what I've noticed in the morning the trek from west to east and then at night they kind of holler and hoot back at their buddies uh, as they make their way back from east to west. So they still probably have a den over there uh, west of our property somewhere. But uh, they definitely get active as the sun starts to set. And with our dogs kind of sitting around the perimeter um, of our property, once again, that usually indicates they heard or saw something. Well, no action this time. Sorry, it's a bit dark bit scary um, no action this time but I think what I'm gonna have to do is uh, invest in a uh, motion night motion camera one of those hunter type cameras set it out or along the perimeter and see if we can get some uh, video but um, 
Yeah, see, usually when Bernard kind of lags behind, that's Betty there, but usually when Bernard doesn't follow me, because as I was saying earlier in my video, Bernard likes to follow me around when I'm out. When he doesn't follow me like this, um, that's because he's just distracted right now. And he's distracted by marking his spot over there. But yeah, so they're on alert right now. Um, it's cold, colder than it was earlier. I'm actually not too cold. I was actually just in the middle of working out when my wife came and got me, so. Um, but anyways, no action this time, but hoping to get some action, coyote action in another footage, another video, another day. Sorry, thanks for watching.